Hello, my gorgeous friends of Webflow. It's your friendly neighborhood, Francesco from Supasaito here. Have you seen the latest liquid glass effect introduced by Apple? It's beautiful, smooth, and of course, now we all want to recreate something similar in Webflow, right? Well, today I'll show you exactly how to do that. And no, we won't need any complex external libraries or heavy code. Just needing Webflow elements, a tiny SVG filter, and a bit of clever layering. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to build a gorgeous liquid glass navbar. Perfect for UI modern designs. And you'll also learn how to structure layered effects in Webflow, how to use SVG filters without fear, how to fine-tune the look with smart adjustments, and, of course, how to bring a little Apple magic into your own projects. If you're looking forward to it as much as I am, stick around, and if you find my video helpful and want to sub more of my work, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. But now, if you're ready, let's dive in! Let's start by opening the full localization site clonable project on Webflow. We're on the homepage right now, and what we want to do is apply a sleek glass effect to the navbar, something similar to the app design Apple just introduced. But before we actually get into the visual part of the effect, let's first make a few small changes to the navbar's design. These tweaks won't affect the effect itself, but they'll help polish the look and feel of the component. So, let's get to work! First of all, we want to make this navbar stick to the top of the viewport. To do that, we simply change its position from static to sticky, and set the top offset to zero. Now, if we scroll the page, we'll notice that some sections are overlapping the navbar. That's because, at the moment, it doesn't have a higher stacking order. So. Let's fix that by giving it a Z index of 2000. That should be more than enough to keep it on top of all other elements. Next, we want to make sure the navbar doesn't span the entire width of the screen. Let's leave one REM of space on both the left and the right. To do that, we go to the width property, click the purple icon, and select the calc function. Now we set the value to 100% minus 2REM. Perfect. But you'll notice that the extra space has only been pushed to the right side. To center the navbar, we just apply margin left auto and margin right auto. And while we're at it, let's also give it a little breathing room from the top of the viewport. So change the top offset from 0 to 1REM. Even if we won't fully see the result just yet, let's go ahead and give the navbar some rounded corners. Scroll down to the border section, and under radius, let's add a generous value, something like 50 REM. That way, we make sure the corners on both sides are fully rounded, regardless of the navbar's height. If you want to check the result right away, you can temporarily change the navbar's background color. You'll see that the rounding has been applied correctly. Then feel free to reset the background color, we'll take care of it later, when we apply the actual effect. That's it for the setup. We've made the navbar sticky, centered it, added some potting and gave it a nice rounded look. Now we're finally ready to dive into the juicy part the glass effect itself. Before we jump into the blur and transparency, let's lay the foundation for that smooth glass look by adding a couple of box shadows to the navbar. With the navbar selected, scroll down the style panel until you find the box shadow section. Click on the little plus icon to add your first shadow. For this one, we want to keep the default outside setting. Set the values to X offset 0 pixels, Y offset 6 pixels, blur 6 pixels, and size 0 pixels. We can leave the color as it is for now, that default gray will work just fine as a soft drop shadow. Now, let's add a second one. Click the plus icon again, and this time 
same as before, we want to keep the default outside setting, set the values to X offset 0 pixels, Y offset 0 pixels, Blur 20 pixels, and Size 0 pixels. For the color, choose something very subtle. In this case, we're going with black with an opacity of 10%. Right now, you might not really notice a big difference, and that's totally fine. These shadows are just subtle touches that will help enhance the realism of the glass effect once we combine them with blur and transparency. Now, it's time to actually build the structure that will give our navbar that dreamy frosted glass look. We're going to add two extra div blocks inside the navbar, and each will play a key role in the final effect. Let's start with the first one. Select the navbar, press Ctrl or Command E, to open the quick find and search for div block. Once added, rename it to navbar glass effect. Then set its position to absolute and click the full button so that it takes up the entire space of the navbar. At this point, you might expect this layer to block the buttons or links inside your navbar, but surprisingly, it doesn't even though it's currently sitting after the navbar wrapper. Still, to play it safe and ensure everything behaves predictably, let's move it up in the hierarchy. Place it before the navbar wrapper. Now, with this blur layer selected, go to the backdrop filter section and apply a blur of 3 pixels. Apart from that subtle blurred effect on the elements beneath, you won't see any visual changes just yet, but trust the process, the magic is coming. Next, we need a second overlay to simulate the subtle white tint that's typical of glassy effects. So, once again, select the navbar, press Ctrl or Command E and add a new div block. Drag this one right after the blur layer, but still before the navbar wrapper. Let's rename it. Navbar Glass Tint. Set its position to Absolute, then click Full. Now give it a background color of white with an opacity of 25%. And here's where the magic starts to happen. You'll begin to see the blur from the first layer and the soft white tint from this one have finally started combining to give us that apple style glass effect. That's it, we've got a solid foundation for our glass effect. We're almost there. Time for the final touch before we get to the big reveal. Let's add one last layer to give our navbar that subtle inner glow that makes it feel polished and real. Select the navbar again, press Ctrl or Command E and add a new div block. Drag it before the navbar wrapper but after the glass tint. Name it Navbar Glass Shine. Set its position to Absolute, then click Full to make it cover the entire navbar. Now let's give it two inner box shadows. This will simulate the shine and light reflections you'd expect on a glass surface. First box shadow, type Inside, then X 2 pixels, Y 2 pixels, Blur 1 pixel and size 0 pixels. Color, let's say white with 50% opacity. Second box shadow, type inside, X minus 1 pixel, Y minus 1 pixel, blur 1 pixel, size 1 pixel. Color, once again white with 50% opacity. At this point, if you deselect everything and preview, you'll notice the glow kicking in. But there's also something else. We've lost our beautiful rounded corners. That's because the original border radius was applied only to the navbar, and the new layers are not inheriting it. To fix that, let's go through each of the three custom layers, glass effect, tint and shine, and apply the same rounding behavior. But instead of manually setting 50 REM again, let's be smarter about it. For each of these elements, scroll to Borders, Radius, click the plus icon, 
select custom and type inherit. This will make each layer automatically match the border radius of its parent, the navbar, even if we change it later. Much cleaner and future proof. To make sure everything works across all browsers and to trim away any unwanted visual overflow at the corners, we'll also apply one last property. For each of the three layers, liquid effect, tint, shine, let's set the overflow property to hidden. That's it. Now all our internal layers are neatly clipped to the shape of the navbar and the rounding is preserved exactly as it should be. We are now super close to finishing our liquid glass effect. It's all coming together beautifully. All right, now it's time to introduce the real star of tonight's build, the one that takes everything we've done so far and cranks it up to a whole new level. We're talking about SVG filters. Yes, they can look a bit scary at first, but they're incredibly powerful, and once you get the hang of them, they open up a whole world of visual effects. But wait, what is an SVG filter? Let's keep it simple. An SVG filter is a visual effect you can apply to an element, like blur, distortion, or color manipulation, but with super fine-grained control. Instead of relying on standard CSS filters, SVG filters let you chain together multiple effects with custom parameters. In our case, we'll use one to create that signature glass distortion very close to Apple's new design. Let's go ahead and implement it. Open the navbar, press Ctrl or Command E and search for embed. Drag the embed element inside the navbar. Anywhere is fine, but let's keep it before the navbar wrapper just like the other custom layers. Then, pass in our SVG filter code that you can of course find in the clonable associated with this tutorial in the description box. You'll notice that it doesn't render anything visual and that's expected. This isn't a visual SVG, it's just a definition of a filter. Its only job is to sit there and be referenced by other elements. Let's also give this embed a class name navbar glass filter and let's set its display property to none perfect now it's invisible but active just waiting to be applied remember the first layer we created the one called navbar glass effect that's the one we'll apply the filter to first let's double check the filters id in the embed code you'll find something like filter id equals glass dash distortion. That ID is the key. We'll use it to reference the filter in our CSS. So select the navbar glass effect div, scroll to the custom CSS properties section, click the plus icon, and in the left field, let's type filter. In the value field, let's type URL and between parentheses, hash glass dash distortion. Hit enter. And just like that, the filter is applied. Now, scroll the page. You should immediately notice the difference. As elements move under the navbar, they are no longer just blurred. They are distorted in a fluid, organic way. It looks like the navbar is made of some kind of shimmering liquid glass. And that's exactly what we wanted. Pretty cool, right? Now that our liquid glass effect is up and running, let's see how we can refine it and make it look even better. Even though it might be hard to notice, especially with a dark theme, I want to quickly highlight the role of the box shadows we applied earlier to the main navbar. These shadows are subtle, but they play an important role. They create depth, making the navbar feel like it's hovering slightly above the rest of the content. This soft elevation effect helps sell the realism of the glass, even if it's almost imperceptible. Let's now adjust the shine to make it a bit more subtle. Select the navbar glass shine layer, click on the first inner box shadow, and reduce the opacity from 50% to 30%.
Do the same for the second inner shadow. This will soften the glow and reduce the harshness around the corners. Next, if you want to improve the legibility of the navbar items, you can adjust the text color. Change the link text color from white at 70% opacity to white at 100% opacity. Do the same for drop-down toggles, to maintain consistent contrast. That should make your links much easier to read against the glassy background. You can also give the glass tint a stronger presence. Select the navbar glass tint layer and change its background color from white at 25% opacity to black at 60% opacity. This makes the navbar feel a little more solid and anchored while keeping the blur and shine visible. Now, let's get back to our SVG filter, the real engine behind this whole effect, and learn how to fine-tune it. To do that, double-click the embed element where we added the SVG code. You'll find several parameters inside, and each one controls a different part of the distortion. Let's break them down. The displacement map is what distorts the image based on a texture. In our filter, it uses a noise pattern to create the liquid wobble effect. The key attribute here is scale. This controls the intensity of the distortion. Right now, it's set to 150. Try reducing it to 100 or even 80 for a smoother, more delicate effect. I personally like 80, it keeps the distortion visible but more refined. The Gaussian blur controls how much we blur the noise texture before it gets applied as distortion. This is done via the SDD deviation attribute. A higher value means the distortion will be more spread out and less sharp. Try increasing it from 3 to 4 or 5. In our case, actually, the visual difference is minimal, so yeah, feel free to keep it at 3. Lastly, the turbulence sets the type and frequency of the noise pattern used by the displacement map. This is controlled by the base frequency attribute. Higher values produce more intense, wavy distortions while lower values result in gentler ripples. Try adjusting it from the original 0.01 to 0.015, a little more wavy, or maybe 0.02 or 0.04, significantly stronger, or 0.007, very subtle. My favorite combination for a balanced look is Base frequency 0.015, standard deviation 3, and scale 60. This gives you a gentle distortion that still feels dynamic and elegant, very close to Apple's original look. If you revert to the original values, base frequency 0.01 and scale 150, you'll immediately notice how much stronger the effect is by comparison. So again, scale has the biggest impact, followed by base frequency. Use them wisely and you can dial in just the right amount of distortion. With just a few tweaks and the right SVG filter, we've created a navbar that looks smooth, glassy and surprisingly similar to what Apple just released. No need for heavy code or external libraries, just need a Webflow plus a pinch of SVG magic. We looked at how to structure and layer elements to create a smooth liquid glass navbar, how to apply and customize SVG filters to control the distortion, how to fine tune depth, glow, contrast and texture for maximum visual impact, and how to achieve a look that's very close to Apple's latest design, with just a few simple steps in Webflow. Everything you saw today is part of a fully clonable Webflow project and the link is in the description down below. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more Webflow tips and tricks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Matane!